How's it going, everybody? It's your boy Poppy Wolf, and today we're talking about episode 69, Giggity, of the Attack on Titan season four, the final season. And the episode is titled A Sound Argument. And god damn, did this episode really play with a lot of things here? Okay, now we start off the episode with um the whole Aaron fight fight speech. Um with and then Hanji overhears it. Hanji's trying to figure out, like, yo, what, what do you, what's going on with that? Like, why are you saying that? And then it, it cuts back to a flashback two years, a year after the they captured some of the Marleans. And they kind of discuss something with a new uh, ally or somewhat ally of the as Azambitos. I think that's what they call the Japanese. I'm just going to call them the Japanese because that's obviously what they are. Because <laughs> they're obviously Japanese. So, I I said in the one of my videos I don't remember what I said the the Hizuru lady definitely seemed like she was um she 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 knew more she had to be in on a lot more than we were led to believe and this episode kind of proves that so we she comes into contact with Mikasa and when Mikasa shows her the mark of the royal family it turns out Mikasa is the last descendant of the shogun and. It was an accident that the child of the Shogun got stuck on the island. And, well, of course, that was Mikasa's uh, family line. So, that's very interesting to find out that Mikasa is the descendant of the ruler. So, her and Historia had bond over that. The story teases her on why she showed Eren, out of all people, that mark. Because she only trusted Eren with that mark. Um, another fun fact to point out in this series, just because, like, I'm like rethinking about it. It is everyone is taller than Levi. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Everyone is like at least like I want to say like five, like six, five eleven, five ten, and homeboy is like I want to say like five six. Everyone is like six foot five eleven, and <laughs> I just think that's hilarious. But yeah, so continuing on with the storyline, um, they're trying to figure. They they hear. The Azambito's plan, or better yet, Zeke's plans of what he wants to do. And they're all hearing the stories and hearing, okay, so what does Zeke want? What does Zeke want us to do? And one of the big stipulations on it is he wants to make sure that somebody with royal blood inherits not only the Beast Titan, but the Founding Titan. In the sense that Historia is going to have to eat Zeke which would make the beast titan stronger i guess because it's from royal family and then eventually she would have someone would have to it would have to inherit the the founding titan so they kind of hint this kind of um they hint this big old thing like we need to make sure that these titans keep getting passed on so that way when the rumbling happens we can control the rumbling and you know eventually Eldians can kind of be in power once again I, I, the whole thing seems like Eldians just taking back the power and forcing their way into the nations as a to come together we still don't know the full degree of it but we know these are his terms of the planet and it, it what sucks is that Aaron is the one who's ba really against this because it does suck because then you have to force the story to be a titan and that's something Aaron didn't want to do because he was like no she doesn't want to be one we shouldn't make her one she doesn't have to be one and with the whole um the whole the whole the whole group is thinking well wouldn't it benefit us like if you like that's one of those things in the long runs wouldn't it work for better if we all just had this power but at what cost is it worth it it really makes you think because now you're thinking like damn this historia really deserved this like she just was forced to be like every like all these type of things like historia's story is really one story in the series that i've actually really did enjoy because it seems like she's passed around and she's always like pushed and and pulled and told you should do this you should be this you should you should do that and this is the first time where she's like if i have to i have to and aaron's like no you don't want to so you don't you shouldn't have to i i really i really vibe with it i really do and um it kind of continues more so with um us getting uh Aaron's kind of whole big 
villainish look when it goes when it cuts away from the flashback a bit to see him talking to Hanji and him yelling at Hanji saying, I could get out of this prison when I want. I'm here because I'm here to protect Historia. I'm here because I want to be here. Any minute I can leave. Any minute. And we get like a we get a little segment and something I want to talk about because I didn't understand this at first until the end of the episode, which was we see a bunch of the guards eating and drinking wine, getting drunk and making big old claims because they're mad that Historia got pregnant. And they're mad because like, oh, Historia got pregnant so she can avoid being in the Titan. Because if she shifts to a Titan form, the baby will probably die. Or um, we don't know what will happen if she does it. But she shouldn't have to be a Titan no more. And everyone's like, no, we should still make her a Titan. They're, they're thinking of their country's power. And one of the chefs, uh, one of the bussers is a Marlene who goes down to pick up more wine. And Nicola was like, no, 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 no. Give him this spot. At first glance, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's probably poison. They're tired of these guys. But then as we continue through the episode, we'll, we'll touch back on this point. So we continue through the episode. Aaron, at first, before he goes to the island, or before he goes back to um, Mar Marley, he's like, no, like, my brother's plan sounds fucking ludicrous. Why would we ever even think about this? And then come back after, like, they start building railroads and stuff and Aaron has a heart to heart with the whole group saying you know I wouldn't want any of you guys to inherit my titan because I love you guys like you guys are homies for life like none of y'all should should have to bear this this demon I want you all to live long lives and it is a big jump because now you're thinking damn there was that Aaron that Aaron who was willing to die for his friends and now you get to fast forward to this Aaron this cut flashback Aaron who's slicked back his hair and is like no I don't I'm doing this for the world and everyone starts freaking out and discussing like yo if suddenly now Aaron is Aaron is making these big old big old um, claims of wanting to like agree with Zeke like why does he want to agree with Zeke and then Connie has a big old uh, hissy fit when he's like what what did like are we even still Aaron's friends? Aaron is Aaron does Aaron still even care about us? What happened when Sasha died? What did he do, Mikasa? What did he do for the person who's grown up with him, for the person who's lived with him most of his life, for the person who's been by his side for so long? What did he do? Cause you know him, right? Why would he laugh? What's so funny? And then it's just it just hits that dagger like it just twists the knife a bit into Mikasa's stomach because she's like she doesn't even know what's going on with Aaron nobody knows what's going on with Aaron and that terrifies everybody because now Aaron went from this guy who's willing to give his life for his friends to somebody who when one of the people he claimed to be precious to him dies laughed and we're left thinking we're kind of left agreeing with Connie like yeah Mikasa if you know Aaron so much what is he thinking what is his whole purpose of all this what does he want? And it, it does suck because I feel like everyone's asking themselves that question. Jean is keeping his mouth shut for once and is looking at Mikasa like, what does he want? Because everybody else is prepared to kill Eren if worse comes to worst. Everyone's willing to get ready to take him out. So what, why shouldn't we already? If he agrees with Zeke, why shouldn't we? Um, it turns out Historia got pregnant by like a random like farm boy. So I just wanted to mention that. So that way we can have that. Um, I just wanted to mention that already off the bat. Um, yeah, so then we get to the ending episode. They're asking like, what was the whole point of everything? Like... Why, why shouldn't... What's going on with Zeke? Like, what if the higher-ups want someone to inherit the Founding Titan? Like, are they going to push that agenda without everybody's knowledge? And it, it kind of seems like it. It seems like the they're forcing... The, the Marleans that are captured by the military are forcing that hand to happen. They're forcing somebody to inherit the beast titan and it shows that when 
they're all drinking wine and getting drunk and it it really shows that's from that same bottle that they probably procured from uh from nicolo so like the ending shot with all of them drinking wine at the camp uh of course levi's watching <laughs> zeke like a hawk um it seems like they're pushing somebody to like they're forcing somebody to become a titan in the hopes that one of them will eat zeke and there you go we've we disrupted the plan we've taken what we wanted and now we could force um you know somebody else to be the beast titan until like the royal family can you know procure a, a fucking somebody but at the same time like is this plan? Like, this, I'm. This is remember. This is all speculation. I'm. I'm just thinking like off the bat. Cause why else would they do that? Why else would they? Why else would they want Zeke to take the Titan power away from him? These are all Zeke's stipulations that he's making. But what if somebody else took the stipulations for themselves? Who knows? All I know is that this episode um, was definitely a lot more. Like you had, I think I'd ha- I had to watch it twice before I really got the the hint of what what the purpose of this episode was, and it's to kind of also paint a big comparison between Aaron before he became a terrorist and Aaron now. And I think I'm just gonna differentiate them as slicked back Aaron and long haired Aaron. Because long haired Aaron still has hope, still has this kind of boyish charm, still has this like I'm doing this for you guys because I love you guys. Like. He still cares about his friends and this long haired Aaron is just like I don't care I'm here because everything I'm doing is because I want to do it why do I sleep in this prison cell because I want to and here's the little moment that moment he scares Hanji like when he can shift at any second really focus on the fact that Aaron could get out of anything being the being the um, having the hammer titan ability having the founding titan and having the attack titan he's pretty much the strongest titan shifter out of all of them right now he already could beat reiner with just the attack titan he um could handle the jaw titan like it's nobody's business and the cart titan is only strong when she has a military force with her at the end of the day there's not much people can do against them and it's really getting me to believe like whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen soon because I mean, we keep going, we keep getting flashbacks and we keep getting everything else like that. So I'm only assuming that the the worst has even begun to happen. But yeah, guys, this episode was fun. Um, it was definitely interesting. It was a lot of, a lot of like hidden reveals happening, like learning that Mikasa is actually like royalty and um, she's descended from the Am- Ambazitos makes me think like, damn, like she's got a lot going on for her being an Ackerman and being of uh, Japanese descent. And um, along with how everyone's feelings went from knowing Aaron before his attack to now and how they're kind of looking at him like more fearful than camaraderie. Yeah, this episode was so interesting. It was so fun. It played on a lot of people's heartstrings and mind. I got to give it, dude, I got to give it like a 9 out of 10. This was another A episode, man. Attack on Titan has been killing it. Like those looks, those reactions seeing the distress on everybody's face it really does hit in a different way and i have to i have to give it up like i haven't felt like oh damn like i haven't been like in a series like this where i'm like oh my lord like this is heartbreaking to see these people go down the wrong path in a while it's like watching star wars done right (laughs) especially the prequels but yeah at the end of the day guys this episode was amazing i'm enjoying the final season i'm like i know the manga chapters are basically like one away from being done or is it already done i have no idea at the moment but yeah this is gonna be it for your boy this is poppy wolf saying yo watch attack on titan peace out y'all i'll catch you all later remember a thousand subscribers and have a good one (laughs) late and happy valentine's day